Hello everybody, welcome back to Open Studio Hour. My name is Emmy Klein and I'm the resident artist here at Jerry's Artorama. Uh, to, if you're not aware of what Open Studio Hour is, uh, essentially this is just an hour long live stream of me doing my normal everyday job. You guys are more than welcome to pop into the chat, say hello, talk about whatever, and if you have any kind of questions about any art whatsoever, it does not have to be anything uh, as to what I'm doing or uh, anything on the table here. If you have any art questions, you can just pop those in the chat too and I will be able to see them. But I'm gonna get my chat started here. That way I can see that. And of course, if uh, I'm a little too uh, engaged in what I'm drawing today, then I have the lovely Amanda as yep. well to make sure that I can uh, not miss your questions. So. Let me get my chat started. Live chat. I think we are good. Okay. I'm gonna leave that over there. Now, um, just to let you know what I am doing, I'm actually gonna be prepping for uh, a future project. This is a bird I'm gonna be drawing. I'm gonna be working in graphite. I have the uh, Cezanne graphite pencil set here. Uh, I think there's 12, 12 of them in here. Right? It's a 12 set, yeah? Okay. And then it ranges from 2H to 12B, which is great. Hey! Ashley, how's it going? Nice to see ya. Thanks for joining. All right, but this is the reference photo that I'm gonna be working off of. Um, this is from, I believe, unsplash.com. Um, I was just looking for a bird with a lighter background. That's honestly, the parameters of what I was looking for. Since I'm working in black and white, I printed it in black and white. Easy, nice and easy. Uh, and I actually did start on this already just because, again, this is something that I'm prepping for a future uh, project. And I got kind of chunked in the side here of the, um, the trees that are kind of out of focus a little bit. And then I have the pencil drawing over here where I have the bird placement and everything, and just so you guys do know, yes, I did trace this. Uh, <laughs> I could absolutely draw this freehand if I wanted to. I just don't have the time for that. Uh, just part of the, the job for me, you know. Um, but I'm going to continue on with drawing. I have a couple of blending stumps here, a couple of different types of erasers, the Vanish and the Kneaded Eraser, and then I have my, this is actually a sharpener that I use all of the time. I probably take it out of its little case. It's adorable little travel case. Uh, but this is a two point pencil sharpener, which is how I get my really long uh, sharpen pencils. So the actual, the uh, the 12 set here, they don't come sharpened like this. This is this little sharpener here. So the first one actually sharpens it really long. Second one sharpens it to a nice point. But that's how I got that, so. <laughs> yes, future projects, future projects. All right, so I'm going to <coughs> start with a lighter pencil just because I don't want to build up my darks just yet. I think even in the corner here where I did the, um, the tree that's kind of out of focus, I am going to need to darken some areas. Um, I don't want to do that just yet because I might actually like to keep it pushed back lighter in value to where all of my focus is right on my little burb. Burb. My little burb. burb. <laughs> so I haven't decided on whether or not I'm going to darken this yet, but I'm going to do that at the end because um, for me it's easier to make your graphite pencils or your drawings darker rather than go lighter. So I'm going to stick with a 2B, which I can tell I've been using because I got graphite all over it. Hey, Paolo and Noreen, thank you so much. I got my haircut that I've been needing for so long. <laughs> and Teresa, nice to see you guys in here. Thank you so much for joining me. Now I'm just going to be, um, a lot of these branches kind of back here are all very blurry and kind of out of focus. So the way that I do that is by not making that a very crisp edge and using my blending stumps. So that's what I'm gonna be actually working on right now. Are you working on the big boy? 
um, accurate white pad? Oh, this is... It's the 11 by 19. I think this is the big one. The reason why I have the light pad, just side note, uh, is because uh, I happen to have it in my office and I was drawing on it to begin with. Uh, I know this is a very perfectly smooth surface, uh, which is a nice uh, tip for those out there doing graphite or even colored pencil drawings. Don't have anything textured under your paper. I am working on the Soho Bristol paper, so it's already super, super smooth. If I have anything underneath my paper, it's going to show through. Even if I have another piece of paper underneath my paper, like if it's just at a slight angle to where just the corner of, of it is in there, if I were to draw on top of this, it's gonna, you're gonna have a visible like line where that, just the, the difference in, um, kind of the surface variation of what's underneath your paper, it's gonna show up. And I happen to know the table that I'm working on, right in the middle is old paint underneath the tablecloth and that would totally affect. So she bumpy. Yes, she's a, she's a well-loved table. She's been through it with us. So <laughs> but that's why I have the, the light table. Uh, it's not actually what I use to transfer my drawing. Uh, I actually just, very quickly sketched, uh, I, this isn't the same one that I had used, I had sketched a layer of graphite on where I knew that there was a bit of a drawing and then I just went over top with another pencil and just transferred it that way. Um, but I just, that's, this is honestly here just for the surface. <laughs> so, it yeah, lives in my office. about it and the largest dimension says 15.75 by length, 23 0.625, but I was wondering what the drawing area was. You said 11 think, by 19. I think this is about, it, it is that one. Now I will say, um, yeah, the ruler surface of this actually goes from 0 to 11 and 0 to 19, but there's a little extra all the way around, so I would say this is probably about a 20 by 12, just the white space. The lit space? Yeah, the lit space. Lit. <laughs> all right. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Ah, uh, Karen, thank you. It is a really adorable little bird, isn't it? I love the royalty-free websites where they give you all the different types of uh, new references that you could ever want. It's amazing. So, I'm going to lay down some darker graphite here for these little tree branchy areas. And then what I'm gonna do, grab a blending stump, is take my blending stump and uh, kind of feather it out to where those edges are not crisp. And that is how you push things back in space and kind of make them have that like blurry kind of a effect. And if that gets a little too dark, I have my kneaded eraser, where if I just kind of very lightly brush that over the edges, I can push that back in value. Which, I know it's a very, very small little detail, but you know, it's one of those things that that's, pencil drawing for me takes a very long time because I'm very meticulous with it. Photorealism with pencils, those details are important. Sneak the light box in. Yes, Ashley, don't tell your husband, but uh, that light, this uh, light tablet. The other thing that I really like about the light tablet is how light and thin it is. So for me, uh, I actually keep this, this is the one for my office. It's super thin. Uh, so I actually store it vertically right next to my garbage can. So uh, if I don't need it and I'm not using it, I just push it off to the side underneath my desk and I grab it whenever I need to, but it's super light. So, you know, anybody who, you know, has a bad back or something and they need to pick it up, this is not that heavy or anything to kind of maneuver around. But it is very solid, I will say that. <laughs> Work on your sketching, yes. Always, always sketch every now and then. It's a good uh, kind of habit to be into. 
Drawing is one of those skills that is, I, I feel like it's just, it's so underrated. And once you get your drawing skills, everything else kind of uh, works. <laughs> Which items from Tuesday? Oh, talking about all the the fine tech palettes that we were talking about. I just keep having to tell myself that I don't need them all right now. Do but you? But there's time. My, there is time. My bank account says I do not. <laughs> Listen, I think I need all of them. Right? This is the part where I get in trouble because I'm like, I need that. I it's it's for work. I need to know how they work. Amy, you've seen my watercolor collection. Yes. I'm not good at telling myself no. So let's just celebrate that I'm doing it right now. <laughs> this is why I'm the worst friend to take shopping. I'm like, yes, you need that. Yes. Absolutely you'd need that too. You can just skip the coffee shop a couple days and you've made up for it. Exactly. Although, we were just talking about Still does not skip all the discounts. <laughs> no. <laughs> graphite. graphite is your second medium. Nice. Water-soluble graphite as a base to speed up your process. That's actually, yeah, uh, Art Graph is really, really fun to play with. Um, I will say, um, graphite in general, even if it's not actually labeled as water-soluble, still picks up with water and any water-based media. Um, which is kind of fun, but just uh, keep that in mind. You can probably make a little bit of like a, I like to take uh, the graphite from my pencils every now and then. Like if I don't have uh, powdered graphite, cause that, that's my jam. I love powdered graphite. Uh, it makes everything for me just go by so much faster. But if I don't have it, you can kind of make it with your actual pencils, as long as you're not like really upset that you don't have your pencils afterwards because you're going to tear them up. But you get all the, a, a good chunk of lead out of those and then uh, form it into a powder. <laughs> but if you can, just get powdered graphite because then you can have your pencils and the powdered graphite. But water soluble graphite is really, really fun. The reason why I'm also did all of that and then I'm working up here and I'm going to kind of work my way down and around uh, is because I'm leaving this corner for last. Um, I might actually end up having to bring in the colored reference as well just for my hand to sit on because I do not want to smudge any of my previous stuff. So uh, once I actually get these twigs and everything kind of up here finished and set, I'm going to actually start over here kind of work my way over um, just so I don't have any because my my baselines I can smudge those right now there's a lot of them that are already blurry um, but I just don't want to smudge anything that I want to be permanent Soluble graphite tin, yeah. Have you seen the, I wanna say it's Art Graph that has like the just huge block of water soluble graphite, just a chunk of it. I have that at home, Do you? so fun. Is that the one that comes in like the cork? Is that the set? Uh, it comes in no, I know what you're about. It comes in like a, like a bag, bag. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was one of those purchases that I was just like, do I need this? Probably not. Am I going to get it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no regrets. Yeah. None. All right. So I know on my drawing here, I have a little bit of a dark shadow. I don't know if you guys can see that. Just a very subtle dark shadow right here uh, where I'm guessing it's a leaf that was just way pushed back in kind of the background uh, and I have graphite on my blending stump from blending 
Uh, and I'm gonna actually just put that in with this so it's very, very soft and subtle, just like it appears in my reference photo. And all I have to do is just make a little bit of a smudgy spot and it is there. Blending stumps, who knew? I think I actually do want to make it a little darker, just on the bottom, kind of lead it towards that branch just a little bit where it appears like it's kind of connected but you get a little bit more of an idea of what's happening. All right. Which are the ones in the cork thingy? Which one is that? He said that those are the Taylor pigment blocks. Taylor pigment blocks. <sighs> Y'all, I, I use so many different things. It's hard to keep them straight in my brain. That one is just not registering in it's, my memory. It's Viarco. It's they come in like a little cork. There's a set of six of them, and they oh. have like little cork places for them to sit. Oh, that's fun. It was another one of those things that I didn't need, but I got. No regrets. No regrets. No regrets. All right. Guessing there's some kind of a branch thing here. That a little wide though. So, usually, when I'm doing these really soft erasing kind of areas, if I don't want a really sharp one, like a sharp edge, I usually mold my, um, my kneaded eraser. Here, I'll pull that up a little bit. Uh, to where it has like a flatter edge on one side and I usually just drag that across the surface really lightly and that's how I get those really soft kind of erasing uh, blends to where it picks up the pigment but it's not a sharp edge. Just like I have there. about the Dallas store um, sorry I it just dawned on me that I saw that question and got immediately distracted uh, <laughs> technically speaking they are open but it's kind of a like a soft opening right now so um, they don't have a absolutely everything in just at the moment but yes you can stop by say hello introduce yourself tell everybody you know what kind of art you do shop a little bit The grand opening has not been missed, where there will be all kinds of fun shenanigans, shenanigans, if you will. But yes, you can stop in. What is on my face? I think I got a little bit of a graphite smudge. Now for these dark leaves. And again, I don't know if I want to go as dark 
as it is. I think I want to make it a little bit lighter in value. That way, again, all of my focus can be on my little birdie. That way, uh, the most contrast is going to be right here, um, especially on the dark beak and kind of his little chest. I might darken those areas uh, much darker than I'm doing the leaves and everything. That way, I can really, your eye goes straight there. anything. Blur out the edges on this too. Yeah, working, uh, working here is definitely dangerous. Especially when you're like, oh, new product? I need that. I wouldn't know that. <laughs> All the Artfinity paper. And not gonna lie, we have some really, really fun things coming and I am so excited for them. Can't say anything just yet, but we have some awesome products coming. Also, if you guys do still have any other questions about art things, if you want me to test anything, if you have any burning questions about products that you don't know about or that you have had questions and you just haven't had a chance to either get to a store or if you wanted to know something about, you know, something that maybe you're interested in, feel free to put that in the chat as well. We have a good array of products around me where I can test things out for you guys as well. Daddy, I want a squirrel. Yes, no, I, uh, yeah. I could probably mention the, uh, the one that you've been eyeballing. Feel like, cause it's, it's almost here. Oh, hold please, I'll tell you if you can. 
Okay, so yes, we're gonna double check, just in case I don't get in trouble. <laughs> I don't know if you guys want insider information. I don't know if I'm allowed. I'm going to hear Katie yelling at me. <laughs> no! I mean, it's on the side. Is it? It's list. There's a... There's a thing? There's a line item for it. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah. I will say, um, uh, Artist Corwin, thank you for joining us. You know, always a pleasure to have you guys watching. Uh, but, yes, what I was talking about that Amanda has been literally like uh what victoria what's her name from charlie and the chocolate factory i can't veruca. remember veruca mm -hmm. she's been very veruca about this product because it we know it's coming because we've been working on it uh and it's the painter's color diary for watercolors it is on its way it's almost here and multimedia yeah and multimedia so we have the original one which is uh oil paints and acrylics and you guys had uproared that you needed needed uh ones for watercolors and you know as soon as we came out with that one we already immediately knew that we went were going to have to do that mm -hmm. but as soon as we came out with that one i was like yes but yeah no you guys were so vocal about it and i i was so excited because i wanted to be like just wait it's coming but uh it is officially on its way and uh hopefully we won't have to wait too long why we shouldn't use our fingers to blend anything. What is, what's happening? Case lighting. Oh. What? <laughs> what is on the side? <laughs> it is, it's eventually gonna be here. Case no. Just... <laughs> yep. Getting yelled at by Katie. Sorry. But yeah, that's, uh, as far as blending with your fingers though, uh, the reason why you don't want to blend with your fingers is because the oil's in our hand. Um, uh, it's just one of those things that the more you touch your paper, the more those oils are going to get into your paper and the harder it's going to be to be able to pick the graphite back up if you need to erase out uh, any of the areas. But, oh, thank you. Love what you've done with your hair. Just wait. My hair will change soon enough. <laughs> Dallas store. Yes. Oh, Frida's watching. Hey, Frida. What paper am I using? Um, I'm using the Soho Bristol paper. So oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's a hundred pound paper, um, but it's that Bristol surface. So super, super smooth, uh, which is how I'm getting all of those really lovely. I'm gonna push this up here a little bit so you guys can kind of see. Um, now you can actually see my line drawing a little bit easier here. And I have to hold it at a slight angle so you guys don't get that glare because graphite does have a little bit of a shine to it. But that's how I'm getting those really nice soft gradients without a whole lot of texture to my paper. Which is why I love using uh, graphite on Bristol. This is the one thing with uh, graphite drawings, <sighs> takes a while. This is one of those, it just, it's one of those process, process processes, 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 processes. That's, that's a word I swear. Uh, it's one of those, uh, the media that just takes 
a while to finish. Uh, but if you do take your time and actually really blend in and get those uh, kind of gradients and things that you need um, to really push and pull those those values that you're looking for, that's um, how I tend to get those photorealistic effects. this a little bit to where my hand doesn't get on the paper. Now the other thing, the other reason why I really don't want to be putting my hands all over this paper is because of the process that I'm going to do after I have my graphite drawing completely finalized. Um, so I'm going to actually, this is, once this is actually finished, <laughs> you guys are talking about my hair, you will have to wait to see what happens to my hair. <laughs> it's going to be a surprise. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to, we're going to have fun hair. Um, but the other thing that I uh, am going to be doing with this is laying down color in my drawing, um, not with any kind of pencil or anything um, but I am it's you'll see it's, it'll be a future project which we'll be doing together which I'm very very excited about um, but this part of it just the drawing takes so long that I needed to have it done before I actually do a Jerry's live because <clears throat> there is not a Jerry's live long enough to get all of this and then additional uh, colors on top of it. <laughs> no, no, I'm not cutting my hair. I actually did get my hair cut. Uh, it is shorter. It's hard to tell, but she cut off all the dead ends. So it's slightly shorter, but, uh, this is as short as I'm going. Listen, y'all, I do not look good in short hair. It's something I, I learned the hard way several times over. Also, growing up in uh, Florida, being just crazy, crazy warm outside, I've had short hair before. Not a good look. Not a good look on me. I am highly jealous of those who can rock the short hair. I am just not one of those people. Bristol. Uh, you talking about yeah the the brown paper that I think you're you're thinking of is craft paper. Um, we do have a Soho craft paper sketchbook, which is really fun. And I believe there's also a lot of uh, pastel paper that comes in that same kind of tone. But those papers are. They're fun, but they're usually quite lightweight as far as, you know, the, the heaviness of the paper. And that's why they're not my personal favorite. Um, you know, if I'm doing a quick sketch or, you know, if I were to use like dry media on it only, that wouldn't be a problem. But I tend to, especially like in sketchbooks, I use all kinds of different things, whatever I have lying around usually. So, those sketchbooks tend to uh, not withstand all of my random... <laughs> MJP, it is me! It's me! I'm, I'm Emmy, I swear. Just a blonde version. Uh, but yeah, those uh, sketchbooks with the craft paper, if you are using a lot of different media in them, uh, it's kind of hard to have those withstand all of the, the wet. Like if you were using watercolor or 
acrylics, they just, they're, they're not heavy enough and they're not sized and they're not created to really take a whole lot of water and stuff like that, so. All right, so I think I'm about to the point where I'm gonna have to start drawing this bird so I don't get things over here where I'm gonna smudge them as I'm drawing said bird. Again, every time I say the word bird, I just wanna say burb. Mm -hmm. Burb. Or the little fat ones, we call them borbs. Borbs. That's adorable. All right, so all of that is pretty blurry and kind of fuzzy looking, uh, just so it looks like it's been pushed back into space. And now all of the crisp kind of areas of my, my borb, a bird, is gonna be in this stick that it's sitting on as well as the actual bird itself. But um, I did not want to get down into this area just because that's where my hand is gonna be. Um, I probably will take the colored version and kind of have it just over here to where I can have something to lay my hand down on. And that's one of those things that if you are working in graphite, put a piece of paper underneath your, your drawing hand just so you're not smudging things. Because even if I'm, I'm doing something like this, I don't want to have any of this smudge. Even though it's already relatively smudgy, you know? That and you don't want to get those oils, again, from your hand onto the paper. Because then it might be visible, so. I'm going to lay down one consistent tone on his little beak, blend it out, and then erase out the highlights and drop in the darker areas. So this is how I um, tend to draw relatively quickly, even though still drawing is kind of a slow process. Start with the mid-tone, erase out your highlights, and then um, kind of work your way out. Fabriano Tizano, I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly. <sighs> Do we have that? Because I don't think I have used that before. Um, I know you we might, I feel like we do have that because we have like everything Fabriano, yeah. Um, remind me, what is that? Again, we have so many things that we carry, it's kind of hard to keep them all straight in my brain. Do what? Um, it's paper that you use with like pastel, charcoal, graphite, pencil, says you can use wash light washes and ink to... I feel like I have used that. It's a mix of cotton and cellulose. Oh, that's that one with cellulose. I actually might not have. Um, Because I, I use all different types of media. It's one of those things that um, I've tried a lot of different, a lot of different things. So I, there's a possibility that I have. Um, off the top of my head, I am not 100% sure if I have tried that. Again, we try I try a lot of different things. Um, and I believe Karen was asking, no, I'm sorry, Lore, Lore9018, uh, you were asking if I'm going to apply any fixative to this. Um, I, are you grabbing the paper? We used to have some in here. I, that I might have tried it. It's, it's one of those things, I, it's hard to remember. I tried it. Um, probably, <laughs> off the top of my head, I cannot remember. Um, but yes, I, I plan on applying fixative to this. I actually plan on applying workable fixative. Um, I'm not 100% sure, um, and I actually have, this is, this is a very crude flower doodle that I did in all of like two seconds. Uh, I actually applied workable, fi workable fixative to that. Uh, the reason why I'm not 100% sure on the fixative thing is because I need to test to see exactly how the color stages react to that workable fixative. I believe 
if memory serves me correctly, it should be fine. But if you were to apply any kind of a varnish, that's when you run into trouble. But again, this is gonna be a future project and you will just have to watch my Jerry's Live videos to see the end result of me uh, adding color to this. <laughs> is that, ah, yes. I have used this. I'm a visual person, I'm sorry. <laughs> Katie knows. This is why she hands them to me. Yes, I have used this. This is the, uh, again, probably still pr mispronouncing it and I do apologize. Tiziano. Tiziano. I know it's Fabriano and it's got the I A N O, so I'm Tiziano. <laughs> uh, yes, I have. And I, what was your question, MJ Pete's? Kind of light yes um it is actually it i believe it is a little bit lighter as far as the um the gsm of the paper uh but it has a nice surface to it a little bit of texture that's what you're looking for um but if you like it better than the meat meat tints i i always want to call it meat tints but meat tints if you're using it uh and you like it better than that uh the meat tints paper then I'm so happy. That's that's great. It's a really good paper. All right. So in the top of his beak, he has just a little bit of light that comes through. So I, I squeeze my uh, kneaded eraser to a flat kind of uh, shape. Hopefully you can see that. And that's how I'm getting, I'm just dragging it very lightly across the top of that beak just to get that light kind of coming back in. Is it light fast? I believe it is. This acid, acid free, yeah. Here, that's kind of uh, in the way, but it says acid-free hydropower product and it's light fast, yes. So it is a light fast drawing paper. And there's all the different things that you can use on it. Drawing, sketching, pastels, markers, ink, gouache, and you can even use this for collage, like a, a well, it says craft, but if you wanted to use this as a collage, um, I have a friend of mine who uses paper like that um, for children's book illustrations and she cuts them up and makes them all into the different layers and uh, a lot of them are three-dimensional which is really really cute so you can do a lot of things with those papers not just draw on it okay so I erased out a little bit of highlight I hope you guys can see that I'm going to actually pick it up Right? Sorry. So I did a mid-tone on his beak, just one general tone, and then I erased out the little highlights, and now I'm gonna pop in a couple of the shadows. Again, this is where I wanna keep the, the most of my uh, darkest darks and lightest lights into the bird, uh, just so I can have that contrast really zoom in the focus on my little, my little bird dude. this little shape that's coming around his beak. And just a little, his little floof that's coming up. Any news on the chat? Oh, uh, yes, MJP. I did actually ask, um, his name is Brandon Soloff, the guy that created the Chelsea Classical Studio Mediums. Um, really, really incredibly knowledgeable guy. I don't, I haven't heard back from him because he might actually be in France right now. So um, I have not 
uh, heard back yet, but as soon as I do hear back, I will be the first one to be bugging you. Because uh, I want to make sure that we find out about that. Um, I'm hoping to hear back before the actual show next week. Because uh, it has to do with the water solubility. Or the water soluble oils. Um, but. I want to see a live about gouache. Use it at school. Never learned how to use it properly. Uh, red and blue never made purple. Purple. I was actually just talking about this. Purple is the hardest color to mix. Uh, most of the time. Uh, you have to have a extremely clean blue and an extremely clean red. And by clean, I mean they have to be like your true primaries. Uh, the reason why is because if you have a, a blue that leans a little towards green, that means it has yellow in there. Uh, and then when you mix that with a red, just be aware that red, yellow, and blue, your primaries all make mud. They make, they make a neutral color. Um, so if you have a blue that leans a little towards green, it has that yellow in there. So when you mix that with a red, you get a muddy purple. And that's why you don't get that real, you know, clean purple kind of a color. Same thing if you have a red that leans a little towards orange. Um, I actually had somebody asking about, it was cerulean blue and cadmium red light. And it made like a forest green. <laughs> Because if you add a little bit too much blue, it'll it'll lean towards the green kind of uh, color instead of making purple, which is the most bizarre thing because you would not think that. But yeah, uh, the, the blue leaned a little towards green uh, and then that red leaned a little towards orange. So those just that interaction of those colors make a, a very funky color that is not purple. But um, if you are interested in a gouache show, uh, now I did have a show about gouache uh, specifically more as to what it was. And I actually brought in every single gouache that we had on our website available. And I went through each line and talked about whether or not it was re-wettable, uh, what the binders were, and you know, talking about what it's traditional gouache is. Um, but if you are talking about how to properly use gouache, uh, you and I are kind of on the same wavelength because I was thinking about doing a show about uh, gouache techniques and kind of um, how to achieve different um, kind of effects with gouache where you use it a little bit more opaquely and a little bit more like watercolor and all the different variations that you can get. Um, but that I have not quite uh, scheduled just yet, just because I have a couple of things that I am gonna have to do before I can get that on the schedule. Uh, but you and I are on the same page. We're thinking about it. By thinking about it, I mean like we're gonna do it. It's just I have to I have to handle a couple of things in order to be properly prepared because I want to make sure it's a good show for you guys. Quinacridone, magenta, and ultramarine blue. Uh, quinacridone, magenta usually is a pretty standard um, primary red. Uh, ultramarine blue is not. You would think it is. It's not. Usually uh, it's called cyan or a phthalo cyanine blue. Uh, a phthalo blue. Uh, essentially PB15.3. Uh, is that, I always mix them up, is it a colon or a semicolon? The two dots. The colon. Colon. Mm -hmm. colon. So PB15 colon, the number three, that is what is usually a standard primary blue pigment. And then quinacridone magenta, again, it's the color names are usually that's what lands in the primary color. Uh, but if you're looking for the um, pigment, it is PR122. Why I remember these things? Again, I can usually not even remember what day it is, but I can remember the pigment codes. <laughs> but yes, those uh, quinacridone magenta and an ultramarine blue, depending on the brand you get, they can make a really, really beautiful purple. Um, 
You can also get a really, really pretty purple with a, um, a viridian and a, like a carmine red, uh, a red that's kind of a little bit more purple and then a viridian that's like a bluey kind of green teal color. If you mix those together, you can get a really pretty, really pretty uh, purple color. What was I just using that with? I want to say it was, uh, well, I did, I did do that with the Marie's gouache flower. That one I did, but the, uh, the acrylic one that I did, yeah, the shadow painting, um, which you guys will have to stay tuned for. But uh, that one, yeah, if you mix the, the, the teal and uh, like a purpley red together, you will get a purple. It's amazing how that works. <laughs> Speaking of mud, can't remember which company and what color. Blend it in the oil that takes their leftover mixes for a gray. It's Gamblin, it's Torrid Gamblin. Gray. Gamblin, yeah. Gamblin Torrid Gray. Torrid. 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 I always want to say Torrid. So, ooh, we only have 10 minutes left. Holy mm -hmm. moly. And I only got to the beak. <laughs> oh, this is what happens. It's okay. Talking to you guys is far more important. And I, you know, this is my normal everyday job. This drawing will be done. So, um, I might not have gotten as far on it as if I had not been talking and, you know, discussing these things with you, but you guys make this so much, so much better. I love talking to you guys. And he's got one fancy beak. That's it. It's a whole drawing. Just a beak. <laughs> Favorite gouache. Ooh. It is hard for me to have a favorite. Um, so I, I have favorites as in multiple brands that I absolutely love. Um, Turner is definitely one of them. I also love gouache gives you PTSD. I don't know if I want to know why gouache gives you PTSD, Paolo. <laughs> I feel like there's a story in there. Um, but yeah, no, I also do really love uh, Holbein gouache. Uh, that's really, really pretty. Um, I'm trying to think of the other brands that I've used. Uh, Schminka. They have really pretty gouache. Right? Is that the brand that I'm thinking of? I, I'm such a visual person, I can see the tube in my mind. And like the brand escapes me. But like in my studio, I know which one to grab. Uh, Maymiri also makes a really nice gouache. It's a little bit more affordable, but also still really solid. I've used a lot of gouache. I mean, I have an, uh, my background is illustration, so I've used a lot of gouache in my, my lifetime. Sometimes I've even used the gouache that uh, came from this was probably more back in college. The kind, the one that came from like Costco. <laughs> that's it, I would not recommend. But if you are trying to create and that's the only thing you can get your hands on, you know. <laughs> Core watercolors. Oh, they're so lovely, aren't they? They just, they move so wonderfully. Gouache set. Oh, sorry, Karen. We'll have to get you a couple other brands. <laughs> oh no, bad quality gua. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a lot of times um, in school they use, uh, at least here, it's a lot of uh, egg tempera. So it's, it's very gouache like. Uh, there was one, oh, there was one brand of gouache that I was going over in the show that was very egg tempera-esque. Five minutes? Mm -hmm. All right. We only have five minutes left. So if you guys do have any other questions, uh, pop them in the chat. You guys know I always go back through the, uh, the comments, too. Let's see. 
seen here that that cheapest, moodiest 12 color set. Oh, whew, didn't get them for us. Thank, thankfully. Uh, although, maybe that's your problem. Yeah, gotta get good quality artist grade paints. That's really not going to uh, cause you to struggle is honestly the biggest thing I've learned, especially while working here. I mean, I want to say you get what you pay for, but um, although, you know, that doesn't always, that's not always the case though, because some of the paints that we carry, uh, you know, I'm always pleasantly surprised by the price point and then they go on sale and I'm like, what? But There are a lot of brands, a lot of brands out there. And that's why I, I do love this job, because then I get to kind of show you guys what things can do, how they function. Do I do this every week? Um, I actually do not do this every week. Uh, this is open studio hour. This is every first and third Thursday of the month. So usually I am the first Thursday, and then Jamie is on the second, or I'm sorry, the third. Thursday, the second show, third Thursday of the month. Um, but this month we actually ended up switching. So I am all of April and she will be all of May. And then come June, we'll be right back to where we were. And then it'll be back and forth. So I am, I would love to do this every week, but I don't, I don't think we have time. Amanda, Amanda's eyeballing me. She's like, no, no, no. It would be great to get to that level, but Maybe someday. One day. That day is not today. So. I am really, really happy that you guys are here and enjoying the show though and chatting with me and talking about all the art stuff and getting in trouble with Katie and <laughs> Katie, I'm sorry. You're the bestest. Listen, we gotta butter her up now, guys. <laughs> it's the brand, oh yeah. I'm not gonna say that out loud. Whew. Loving the open studios, aw. I'm glad you guys enjoy them. All right, so let me get this little eyeball. Hmm. I'm gonna have to leave his highlight because that would be very difficult to erase back out to get it nice and pure white. But. like no distinction between where his eye ends, right? Yeah, where his eye ends and that little shadow area kind of begins. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna blend it all together. That's about our time. Uh, you have like 30 seconds. seconds. <laughs> Oof. Called it. You really went, you were spot on on that. Alright, let me get his highlight back in just a little bit. And he's got my ball. There's my little verb. He's getting there. But yeah, I will uh, continue along this with 
with this drawing and then uh, hopefully eventually today <laughs> we'll have it done. Uh, graphite drawing just takes me a very, very long time. It's a slow process for me. It's, it's one of those like slow layering kind of building up your shadows and uh, pulling back your highlights and things like that and kind of pushing and pulling the graphite around on my on my paper here but um you know it's a fun process and something that I always really kind of need to make sure I practice more than I probably do <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed it um we will be back we blah, 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 excuse me <laughs> we will be back with another open studio uh the first Thursday of May. I don't know how the date on me by this. this I'm sorry. They're looking it up. We're going to double check. But um, that was Open Studio. And I hope yeah, you guys enjoyed it. Cinco de Mayo. <gasps> Cinco de Mayo. Oh, we, you know we're going to have something Cinco de Mayo themed. So that will be Jamie, though. She will be back on. And then uh, so Cinco de Mayo, May 5th, uh, we will be back for another Open Studio. But you guys uh, definitely should join me over on Jerry's Live, where I uh, am going to be going over all different types of things. Uh, next week is actually going to be a continuation of the water-soluble painting, where I uh, actually I have it down here. Continue along with this painting of my dog. Yes. But we're going to be using water-soluble oils. We are going to be um, glazing colors, and that will be the show. So I hope to see you next Tuesday and next open studio hour. Thanks, guys. Bye.